Now let's look at two arms that are the same effective length, but use different pivot to spindle dimensions. So here you see the same effective length, these two arms, but they do have different pivot to spindle distances. And why am I doing this? Well, the, the, the wonderful, wonderful SAT tone arm, uh, certainly coveted by many, including me, as being easily uh, one of the top, if not the top arm in the world, uses an unusual geometry. The designer of that arm has decided to go with something other than the IEC uh, minimum and maximum playing radiuses of the record surface. And that's why you see these two innermost groove circles here, where the innermost one here corresponds to the IEC standard and this one here to the SAT standard. Now, there's nothing wrong with this decision. I happen to agree with the designer of this arm that indeed records have not been being cut as close to the label as they used to be. We did a video on this. We measured 1,300 record sides and tabulated them all for where their innermost groove was and then um, determined, of course, the production date and the, and the genre. And yes, and certainly if you're playing 45 RPM audiophile records, this is for sure, that the innermost radius that of IEC standard 60 millimeters just isn't being reached very often at all. So a decision was made by the designer to optimize the arm geometry to play more modern playing surfaces. One could argue whether he chose the right innermost radius or not, but we're gonna take a look at the impact. So you see here when the arms are at the outermost area, they vary in their effective moment arm by about 8%. So meaning the non-compliant tone, tone arm geometry is actually about 8% uh, more powerful at this area of the record. And then they go down to their minima somewhere around here. And as you can see, there's now an 11, 11 plus percent difference between the two. Uh, again, with a non-compliant tone arm being the more powerful skating force. When they, uh, when they meet at the chosen innermost groove radius of the non-compliant tone arm designer, there's a good 15% difference. If you use that same non-compliant tone arm and go to the IEC minimum, you'll see now we're looking at about 17, 18 almost percent increased skating force with the non-compliant tone arm. Again, I'm not saying that there's anything necessarily wrong with this at all, with this decision by this designer. I'm simply saying it's good to be aware of it so you have an idea of how much that, that this, an arm like this, would require more skate anti-skating force than a typical IEC compliant tone arm. How much more? Well, if you take a look at those figures right there, anywhere from 8 to 15% more. This means when using a Wally skater with this particular type of arm, you'll want to, in, instead of aim for a 10% anti-skate force, you would aim for about 11 to 12. 